السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم my name is Ashley and I have been thinking about making this video for so long so I wanted to share the story of how I found Islam converted because I get asked so much so I converted in June of 2019 so at this point it's been just a little bit over a year alhamdulillah um it's been quite a journey and for some people it looked like my journey was one month but for me I think it probably started when I was in college um so I guess I could start there and that's usually where I start but for those of you who, you know, most of you probably don't know me, so I did want to say I have grown up in the United States, um, in the state of Arkansas, so a southern state where, you know, we kind of live in what we call the Bible Belt. So Christianity is very big, a lot of people go to church, um, and then where I grew up, it's predominantly white people and you go to church and you don't learn about a lot of religions, you don't have a lot of um, experience, I guess, with the outside world, you could say. So when I went to college is really when I got exposed to people of like other cultures and even people of color, to be honest. Um, so crazy to like, I guess, talk about it. Um, it typically is a topic of conversation when I tell people where I grew up. So. If you want to google it i grew up in harrison arkansas so i went to college and when i was i believe a sophomore maybe a junior um it's all kind of a blur all the semesters kind of run together um when you like look back so i saw a flyer for a program and they partner american students with international students and I thought that that would be really cool, um, just like a fun experience, meet a new friend, learn something, be able to teach them something. And so it is a mentorship program where you were only required to speak with them like once a week or so. You know, you can email back and forth or meet up. So I remember going into this classroom and it I think was bigger than they expected because it was a little chaotic. So eventually we were all sitting in these desks and they kind of had the American students on one side, international students on the other. And I remember I was looking around the room trying to, you know, just kind of get a feel for everything. And I looked back and there was a girl sitting there. Um, there were two girls wearing hijab talking. And I thought, that's her, that's my partner. I just know it is. So at one point, the woman kind of running the show um, is having people stand up and partnering them. And I can tell like she's gonna be really close to um, standing up at the same time I am. So when I saw her get ready to stand up, I stood up and the lady paired us together. And um, my partner was in grad school, um, originally from Saudi Arabia, and um, we became really good friends. So I got to spend about two years or so with her and learned so much. So we taught each other a lot. And you know, looking back, I don't really remember talking about religion a whole lot. Um, that was not ever really just the main topic. I think I asked maybe a couple of questions and I did see if we went out to eat together. I remember someone staring at her and at first I thought, why are they staring at us? And then I realized it's because of her hijab. And I just, I always wanted to stick up for her and I wanted to be there for her. So eventually when, um, we graduated so I graduated with my bachelor's and then she graduated with her master's um, just a day apart so she left and then that following January I was in grad school and the night before world hijab day so world hijab day is February 1st every year so the night before I find out about it right so I just I think Facebook so I decided to take part in world hijab day so I watched YouTube videos and it's so funny to me looking back because I think one of the first videos I ever watched was by Lena Snowbar. Her handle is with lovely. I took an infinity scarf I had from my closet. I practiced 
And it's so funny because looking back now, I actually reached out to um, somebody who had converted and I said, hey, does this look okay? And she said, yeah, that looks great. So I did my best to recreate it the next morning. And I remember reaching for the door handle to leave my apartment and I hesitated and I thought I've never hesitated before. Um, I've been self-conscious about, you know, outfits and things like that and getting ready and, you know, how my hair looked. And I thought, I don't know how I'm going to be treated today. Um, but I was kind of trying to prepare myself to um, handle anything that came at me, I guess you could say. So I did get some funny looks because I was a graduate assistant, so I did have a job on campus. And so everybody's like, you know, what are you doing? And then some people were like, oh, I wish I had known so I could participate too. So um, I had a really good day. I posted on social media and got a lot of positive feedback, especially from other Muslims. They really appreciated it. So I really threw myself into some research about World Hijab Day and I wanted to become an ambassador. So that following year, I became an ambassador. I think that was 2017. And I ended up moving to um, a larger area, um, larger city, but still kind of small for Arkansas. But um, I worked on a college, a different college campus. So I actually attended their day and kind of hung around with them, wore it again. And then um, the next year, so 2018, I said, I want to hold my own event in the city. So I had told some girls at the, at the college or at the university that I wanted to hold this event. So they said something to some women at the mosque who got in contact with me and said, hey, we want to help you. So when we had a, we had a little meeting and I remember I went to a small mosque um, that's kind of used for like classes and things like that. And I, I, I go in and I talk to this man and I told him who I was waiting for. He went back in a room because he was doing something. He comes back out and he offers me a snack and he shows me where the restroom is. And I come back out from the restroom and he offers me a piece of pie. And he kept like, you know, just going back and forth like he wanted to talk to me, but he wasn't sure. And at one point he said, here you go. And he gives me a calendar with like pictures of mosques. And I thought, well, that's really cool. And then he handed me like two Qurans and I was like, cool, I can read these and like maybe, you know, that'll help me be a better advocate and be more understanding of Islam. And he sat down next to me and was talking at one point and there were more, more people starting to gather in for the meeting. And before we started the meeting, he said, you know, the way that the media portrays our religion and he, he mentioned that and some other things he said, it's just, it's just the most misunderstood religion. And that really stuck with me. You know, I thought I need to learn things for myself for sure. And so at the meeting, the women agreed to help me. And then they said, we're going to go, vi we visit churches for World Hijab Day and give the women scarves and teach them about it. And so they do a lot of interfaith events. So we helped each other out. And when it was all over, World Hijab Day was done. I said, I'm going to miss you guys. So maybe during Ramadan, I can come and visit you at the mosque. And I knew that World Hijab Day did a 30 day hijab challenge. And I just thought that's a lot. And I, I just don't know if I can do it because I didn't want to put it on and try and then fail, to be honest. Um, so I thought about it for a while. I had a few months um, because Ramadan was in, I think April that year. And um, I decided to do it and I thought if I'm going to do the 30 day hijab challenge and I'm going to visit them at the mosque, I might as well fast as well. So I wore the hijab as much as I could out and about. I, I let work know, hey, I'm going to be wearing this. And I was at the mosque almost every night. There were a couple of nights I couldn't go because of work because I was traveling at the time. And I noticed about a week or so in maybe two weeks as I was learning more, I could feel this change happening. And no one ever pushed me or anything. They just said, hey, if you have any questions, let us know. Or if something was going on that maybe I wouldn't have known why it was happening or what it was exactly, somebody would offer up the information. And I eventually asked my friend to teach me how to pray. And I was like reading the Quran, I would get up for Sahur and like, watched people's stories and I was like trying to learn about Islam and that Lena came back around, um, the women from the Salam Girl podcast, I discovered them. And so there was just so much 
going on. I, you know, I was learning so much and I was just really trying to dive into it and I wanted to be a better advocate was really what my goal had been. But by the end of it, I was really falling in love with the religion. So one night I'm at the mosque, it's toward the end of Ramadan, everyone's praying and I'm watching and I'm reading the Quran and I was actually um, still toward the beginning of the Quran when um, God is actually speaking to Mary about Jesus and having a baby. And I thought it was so cool, all of the parallels between like Christianity and Islam, since I had a Christian background. And I remember a woman came up to me and some people were very surprised that I wasn't Muslim already. Um, they said I wore the hijab well and they had seen me there so often. And I really appreciated <laughs> the compliments about the hijab. Um, she asked me, she said, why do you hesitate? And I thought about it for a second and I thought, I don't know. I really don't know what's holding me back anymore. Cause I had fought myself a little bit, you know? My family's not Muslim, it's a huge life change. But I just felt this overwhelming sense of peace. Something, this just a peace that I hadn't really felt before. Because with Christianity, I went to church off and on. We didn't start going to church until I was 12. And then throughout college, it was off and on kind of. And when I moved to the city on my own, I tried again and something always felt like it was missing. And so I said, I'm gonna take my Shahada. So I text one of my friends um, and I let her know. So I did it the last day of Ramadan and it's, it's <laughs> there's hardly any words to describe how amazing it is. Even just sitting here talking about it. It's been amazing and I'm so grateful. Allah has blessed me tremendously and I wouldn't change a thing. So that's pretty much my story. I will say um, since I converted, I just ended up not taking my hijab off. And I think the hijab was kind of one of those things that helped. Like I got very comfortable and to me like, to me the hijab helps me remember Allah, which is so important. And it reminds me of my faith and it's an outward appearance of my faith. And then, you know, modesty is important too. Um, I enjoy um, just everything. I love my hijab, like I can't imagine not having it and and being Muslim, I can't imagine that. So my family, I know I'll get this question too, so I'll go ahead and answer it. How did your family respond? <laughs> so um, I think that they were all a little surprised and thrown off. Um, they offered some support, I noticed later that that support wavered a bit. Um, I know it's confusing. So I do of course visit them for their holidays like Christmas. You know, I'm there to support them. And then, you know, they know when I'm fasting and things like that. So there's still a lot of obstacles and learning on both sides. But for the most part, um, I've had just such a really great community anyway. Um, and I definitely threw myself in. Um, to like classes to like learn Arabic and I went to sun I, I've gone to Sunday school so it's there's always going to be so much to learn about and I'm trying to kind of take my family on that journey with me as much as I can without overwhelming them but alhamdulillah I just I found this beautiful religion and I'm so grateful for it